How's everybody doing today? I certainly hope you're doing well. It is Friday night. It's time for another edition of Storytime. As you can tell, I got my ears lowered. And that's because we're going to be doing some New World Order soldiers soon, you know. So I got a in preparation for, right? But it's time for another edition of Storytime. And if you like cliffhangers, you'll definitely like this story. This is not a true story. It is a story in which I've created. The name of the story is called Wine Traveler. So let's go ahead and begin, shall we? There was a woman in about, uh, she's about her mid-30s. Her name was Diane. She worked at a college as a teacher. She taught English. Now, she had been teaching English for some time, and Diane was married to Roger. And Roger had a very unique job, and his job was an engineer. And specifically, he did all types of engineering and schematics dealing with electromagnetic transportation, dealing with trains, reverse electromagnetics. And you see, Roger was off in Japan working on a very large project that dealt with reverse magnetics so that that way these trains could hover off the tracks there and go maximum speeds ex accessing 180 miles an hour. So he was quite gifted. He was paid a lot of money. But you know what? Him and Diane were separated merely because of employment, nothing else. Now, because Roger had been in Japan for several weeks, you know, he would call Diane, you know, maybe one or two times a week. And they would have little chatty do's either via email or some sort of conversation on the telephone. And Roger figured, you know what, just because he's him, he decided he was going to send Diane a one-of-a-kind bottle of wine from Tokyo, Japan. And where Roger got this bottle of wine was from a street vendor. And the street vendor assured Roger that this is one of a kind bottle of wine. But you see, all of the ingredients and the name of the wine and all that stuff was in, was in Japanese writing. He didn't know how to read and write Japanese. Maybe he could speak just a little bit of it. Skoshio, right? But he didn't know what it said. All as he knew is that that was a one-of-a-kind bottle of wine. And that's what he wanted, because he wanted to send that bottle of wine off to Diane, because he's that kind of guy. So here it is, a Tuesday afternoon. She gets a little ding on the dong. About 5.30 in the afternoon, and it's UPS. Got a special delivery. You got to sign for it. She's like, well, who's it from? Oh, it's from her husband. Look at that. <laughs> she just signs right away. She gets this package. She brings it in. She opens it all up. and little note there from her husband. Baby, I was thinking about you. I figured I'd get you this bottle of wine. It's one of a kind. She's looking at it. Of course, it's, it's all in Japanese writing. She doesn't know how to speak Japanese. I mean, she's an English teacher, for Christ's sakes, right? She's looking at it, and she's like, oh, that was so sweet of him. Kind of like Monty. That's something Monty would do, too. I wrote the story, so I would know. <laughs> so, she sits there, and she opens up the wine there, and she pops the cork, and she's smelling it. Oh, it's a real sweet wine. It's a red wine, but it's real sweet smelling. Oh, yeah, almost like fruity. She puts the cork back on it, and she thinks, oh, okay. Huh. I'm going to have some of this wine after I clean up the house. She's cleaning up the house. She's vacuuming. She's up underneath the couches and up underneath the refrigerator and the stove. I mean, she's doing spring cleaning, buddy. And the funniest thing is, she found a magnet. It had to be from Roger. She found a magnet that was shaped like a football. Not a magnet that was shaped like a U or a square. Or a circle. Oh no, this magnet was very unique, kind of like Roger. This magnet was shaped like a football. 
very strange. Did it have the magnetic qualities? Well, of course it did. Yeah. From every angle that you could think of. Yeah. Very strange. So she took that magnet that she'd found laying up underneath the stove there and she put it in her blouse pocket. Okay? She gets to cleaning everything up, real dusting everything off. and She's pretty satisfied. She's got the house nice and clean. She sits down. She grabs that bottle of wine, and it's a red wine. And she pours herself a glass, and she fills it up about half way full. She sees that magazine sitting over there, and she, she gets up, and she leans over to grab that magazine, and what happens? That football-shaped magnet falls into her glass of wine. Oh, yeah. But you see, because the glass is so long, she can't quite get her fingers in there to grab the magnet to pull it out of the wine. But seeing how the wine is one of a kind, and it was sent to her from her husband, Roger, out of Tokyo, Japan. She's not going to fumble it about. She's just going to drink her wine with the magnet in the glass. And as she's sitting there thinking about her day, she gets her finger moist, right? And she starts rubbing her finger around the glass, making that noise. You know how it is. Kind of like some sort of weird noise, but can't really put your finger on it, right? And then suddenly, around the edge of the glass, it starts turning into metal. And then there's a white and a bluish hue in the top of the glass emitting from the wine glass itself. She's getting a little bit nervous. She's not really sure what to expect. So she reaches over and grabs a pencil. She's very nervous, and the glass is just sitting there on the table. She puts this pencil about just a little bit into it just to see what happens. It disappears. She's, no, wait a minute. That pencil is one and a half times taller than the glass itself. So where did it go? She's looking at the glass. She's examining it. She doesn't see the pencil in there. She is seeing this like this white and a bluish hue and it's emitting some sort of like gas out of it. Kind of like dry ice does, right? Very strange. So she gets up. She goes into the kitchen. She gets a spatula, right? Wooden. She's got the glass there sitting on the table. She figures, well, this will go right in there. And all of a sudden, she puts it about that far in and whoosh, disappears. She didn't know what to think. And when she moved her, her hands and her arms like, like this, it knocked over the glass. It broke the glass and all the wine spilled out all over the table along with the football-shaped magnet. She's looking at it and she's thinking to herself, okay, now, okay, a pencil just disappeared. A spatula, a wooden spatula just disappeared. The spatula itself is two and a half times longer than the wine glass. How is this possible? She couldn't figure it out. So she gets to thinking, you know what? I got to work in the morning. I don't have time for this. I'm just going to go to bed. So about 20 minutes later, she's headed out to go to bed. She's headed to her bedroom there. And all of a sudden, she hears this noise. She's like, what? Yeah. 
She turns back around. She's trying to listen to where that noise is coming from, and it's her front door. She's hearing them constant. She's, oh my goodness, who in the hell could that be? Look at the hour. Who would be knocking at my door at this hour? She looks out the peak hole. She didn't see anybody out there. It didn't trigger the security light. She opens the door. There's nobody there. She looks down, and there's that pencil. Except the pencil is coated with some sort of metallic structure all the way around the pencil. But you can tell it's the pencil because the eraser is still there and the lead is still there. She goes down to pick it up, and it, it weighs about a pound. It's fascinating. How is it that a pencil that weighs almost nothing suddenly weighs a pound? It was absolutely crazy, right? So she takes a pencil and she thinks, well, you know what? I do work, work at a college, and I guess I can have this tested to find out what kind of metal this is. Because there's no way in hell that this should weigh a pound. This is crazy. She takes a pencil and she's headed back to her bedroom so she can go to sleep. As soon as she grabs the doorknob, she hears... <laughs> She's like, what in the heck could that be? She goes over to the front door. It didn't trigger the security light. Still, she's here. She opens the door. There's nobody there. She looks down. There's that... There's that wooden utensil, right? It's, that, it's covered in some sort of metallic structure all the way around it. She goes to lift it up. It weighs 10 pounds. She's like, okay, now this this just out of this world. Man, what is going on here? She can't figure it out. So she goes off to her room. She goes to bed. She wakes up in the morning. She brings the pencil and spatula with her at her workplace, which is a college. And she goes to meet somebody that deals with metals and stuff and does testing, that sort of thing, like chemical testing. And she hands over the both the pencil and the cooking utensil, the spatula there, to this guy and says, listen, I, I just need you to tell me what kind of metal that is. I'm just curious to know. She didn't tell him why, because it's too crazy, right? So, she goes on about her day, and about 1 o'clock, she's sitting there in the, you know, place where they just hang out, teachers all hang out, like teacher's lounge. And this guy just happened to walk in that was testing the pencil and the spatula, and he said, you know something, I want to tell you something, Diane. The strangest thing, that pencil, the metal components of both the pencil and the spatula are stainless iron. I know, I know that's hard to believe because either you have stainless steel or you have iron, but you can't have both. And to be quite honest, it's stainless iron with another component that I cannot figure out. It's nothing that we know of on this earth. Whoa, that got her to thinking. She's like, well, thank you very much. And uh, he goes, but you know, I'd like to keep the pencil and the the uh, spatula there for further testing if that'd be all right. And she's like, oh, sure, sure, no problem. So Diane leaves work that day. She gets back home. She gets to thinking, now hold on a second here. Hold on. That magnet that was shaped like a football fell inside the wine glass. The wine came from Tokyo, Japan, which is one of a kind. But I don't know what the bottle says because I can't read it. It's in kanji. Hmm. Then, 20 minutes later, after the pencil disappeared inside the wine glass, along with the spatula inside the wine glass, both of them ended up at my front door, covered in some sort of stainless iron. But where was it at for the 20 minutes? Oh, that was killing her, boy. That was bugging her. Where did it go for 20 minutes? Because the guy that was testing the metallic makeup of the both 
the pencil and the spatula stated that there was another component that was out of this world. Those are his words. So does it mean that the pencil and the spatula traveled somewhere else off of the world and then came back and ended up on my front door? Diane was, you know what? Diane had to re replicate this. She had to replicate it because she wanted to know for herself. Oh yeah, she wanted to go traveling. She wanted to go see where that pencil and that spatula went. <laughs> she's going to damn well find out too. But she's got to replicate the exact same circumstance that happened the night before. So she takes a wine, she pours herself a glass of wine there, and she puts in the the football-shaped magnet. She starts rubbing the edge of it there, right? To get that get that noise. And as that noise comes about, it starts turning that white and then that blue and it starts emitting some sort of gas, almost like dry ice, and here it is. She gets to thinking to herself, hmm, what to do? So she takes her finger, right? She goes to reach over and she figures, nope, I'm not going to do that. She races over, she opens up one of the drawers and grabs a hammer because she's going to need this hammer just in case. She takes her left hand or a left finger, and she goes to put it inside the glass, and if something goes wrong, she's going to break the wine glass, right? In the nick of time. Just in the case this thing wants to grab all of her, right? So, as she starts putting her finger inside of it, she gra and she breaks the freaking glass. But guess what? Now, half of her arm up to her shoulder is inside of the table. She can feel her hand, she can feel her arm swinging around, but again, she is up to her shoulder inside of the table. And even though she broke the glass, and the glass is now broken, and now you have the, the magnet there, and the, all the wine is spilled all over everywhere, she's in the table. She looks over and there's a cell phone. She's going to have to call 911. She's not in any pain, but she can't get out of the table. Strangest thing. She reaches for the cell phone, but she can't reach it. So she has to grab the hammer and reach, pull it to herself. She calls 911. The paramedics come out. They're knocking on the door. She's like, come in, just come in. Well, they can't come in because the door's locked. So they, they bust the door down, and as soon, as soon as the paramedics get there, all of their jaws have just hit the floor because they can't believe what they're, what they're witnessing. Because this woman is up to her shoulder in a table, but underneath the table, you can't see her arm. Where's it at? But according to Diane, she can, she can move her hand in the whole nine yards. She can move her fingers. But the paramedics can't see anything up underneath the table. So they're asking Diane, okay, what happened? She's trying to explain to them. She has this, this bottle of wine that came from Tokyo. And then she put the glass, and then she has a magnet, and she put the glass, and then she's driving around the rim. And they're thinking she's out of her mind. She's not too bad. She's crazy. Nobody's believed in this mess. So they bring in a chainsaw, or not a chainsaw, but uh, sort of like these saws for, you know, these uh, life saws that they cut into the cars and stuff. And they cut out the part of the table and take her with it. So here she is. She's got a piece of the table there. Her arm's not on the other side. According to her, it is. But according to them, it's not because they can't see it. So they bring her into this room, like ICU, except without all the stuff hooked up to her. And she's just kind of hanging out there. And one of the nurses comes in. She's, Diane's like sobbing. She's crying. She's upset. She's like, listen. She's like, listen, I need you to help me. 
and, and she's trying to talk with one hand because the other arm is encased in this kitchen table. She's like, listen, I, I need your help. I know this sounds crazy. I will pay you $1,000 in cash. All you need to do is go to my house, okay? You need to get a bottle of Japanese wine. Go up into the cupboard and grab a wine glass. You're also going to see a football-shaped magnet on the table. Bring those to me. Please bring them to me. I'll pay you $1,000. I... Please. And the woman's like, thousand dollars, a lot of money for doing so little, right? She figures, okay, uh, alrighty, all right. And it, it, do you want that now? She's like, right now, please. I'm begging you. So the woman, the nurse, right? She goes over to her house. She goes in the cupboard. She grabs a wine glass. She looks on the table. She sees a bottle of wine. It's all in kanji. Japanese bottle, right? She grabs that magnet. Football-shaped magnet. She collects those. She brings them to Diane, who is in that, in that room, that hospital, right? She's like, listen. Okay, this is what I, I need your help. I need your help. Please, I need your help. Okay, take, take the glass, set it down on the counter. So here the nurse, she's like, well, where's my $1,000? She's like, listen, I'll pay you $1,000 as soon as I get out of this mess. I promise. And if you don't believe me, you can go back to my house and you can steal anything you want. I give you my word. The woman believes her now, right? Because that's pretty audacious. So... She's like, okay, now what I need you to do is I need you to take the glass, put it on the counter. I need you to fill the glass a little bit more than halfway. Now I need you to take the football-shaped magnet. I need you to drop it in the glass, and I'll do the rest. So she does all that, and here she is, has this part of her table sitting there. Diane turns around, and she puts her finger in there, and she starts going around and around. You know how you do, right? Makes that noise. And all of a sudden, all the way around the rim of the glass, just start turning the metal. And starts emitting this bluish white type hue with this little gas coming out of it, kind of like dry ice, right? She's hanging on to the glass there. You know, the, the nurse and such. She's like, okay, now just stand back, stand back. And then all of a sudden, Diane reaches with her other hand, because the other one is locked up in this table. She puts her finger into the glass, and all of a sudden, disappears. The nurse that just witnessed this almost falls down and has a heart attack. She can't believe what she just saw. She races out. She goes down the hall. She goes over to like the, uh, the the desk there. She's like, there's an emergency. Okay, the patient that was in 274, she just poof, disappeared. They're like, what do you mean she just disappeared? Okay. She put her finger inside the... I was like, poof, disappeared. And this nurse is just... She's just absolutely out of her mind. She's acting like nuts and crazy and sobbing and shaking and freaking out. They don't know what to do. She's like, listen, you got to believe me. I'm not nuts. I'm not crazy. Check the security feed. Well, that's what they did. They did check the security feed. And sure enough, here that nurse was holding on to a wine glass that was emitting this white and blue hue with this little gas coming out of it. And D Diane reached over and she touched and all of a sudden, boom, disappeared. Sure did. Uh-huh. But where did she go? Where did she go? 20 minutes later, oh yeah, she starts knocking profusely on her own door at her own home. But guess what? Nobody is there to answer it. I'm monographing if you can't speak freely, you're simply not free. <laughs>